I so need your take on the new Sex and the City coming without Samantha. And I don't mean in the larger sense of <laughs> Kim Cattrall. Not to get and, you in trouble, Darren. You're really putting me on no, the spot I, now, aren't you? I, I, Darren, <laughs> wow. I have to know. But look, I don't mean uh, the larger whatever was going on beyond like outside of the show i mean the character of samantha not being part of it i think look how do you I feel think, about that i think we're gonna we'll certainly miss that character there's no question but you know i think at some point a, any actor is like at a point where they're saying like i played this role and i'm uh, it's like i feel like i'm done with that role you have to sort of respect that after 20 years that um and i and i know that um we're gonna find a really creative and satisfying way to keep telling the story um without samantha there's a there's just like you can miss your best friends in life and life goes on this the, the same thing will happen with sex in the city hmm. let me ask you the same question about let's just go back through some darren star greatest hits um yeah. sex obviously like uh, like younger Sex in the City started as you know as as Candace Bushnell's columns, but do you remember the first moment where you thought this is this could be a TV show? You know, I was doing this show in New York Central Park West. I was friends with Candace. She was writing this column. Um, I loved I loved the column. I I knew that world, and I thought I want to do something. I love the title Sex in the City, and I loved Candace knowing her as well as I did as a character. And I thought, I just want to write something about this world. And in my mind, it was going to be like maybe a little independent film. When it was on HBO, I thought this is like an independent film for television. It wasn't, I never thought it was going to be like a big commercial show. I thought it was something like there's going to be, it's kind of after doing like big network shows like 902 and OMO's place. I wanted to do this sort of R-rated comedy about sex from a female point of view set in a New York that I knew. Um, and just very adult, but I never like thought of it beyond that. You know, I just wanted to do something kind of personal. And wow, because it seemed at the, at the time, doing a show on HBO was not a big deal. I mean, you kind of made it a big deal. But I remember Sarah even at one point saying the same thing, like, "Oh, are we actually doing this?" Like, it, the stakes <laughs> did not seem. Yeah, but at the same huge, time, it was considering like- what it became. Yeah, but it was a movie service and there was something there was something cool about not doing a network show, you know, and something cool for Sarah Jessica Parker, who was like a movie star to say, I'm doing a TV show, but it's on HBO. I'm not doing it. It's not on a network. You know, it's like it's on it's on HBO. So there was there was like a um, the stakes were low, but the the expectation of quality was high. And those were the only stakes was quality. That's all they cared about. And I love that. I love the idea that you're writing that the that the criteria is it just has to be smart and good, not that it has to get ratings. And so that was a game changer for me to be able to write a show under under like under those sort of expectations, with those expectations. 